Hello and welcome to episode one of the open-ended Fortran debugging series. My name is Holger Wolf and today I'll be talking about symptoms and terminology. Since this course is mainly aimed at the researchers of my center, it will focus heavily on the tools that are available to these researchers, but I hope that even other people might find something useful. But first, I want to talk about the symptoms, how programs fail. The ways that programs can fail usually fall down into one of three different categories. The program can produce incorrect results. That means that the program runs and terminates, but the output or the, the desired behavior um, was not followed. The second way that a program can fail is in a crash. That means that the program terminates unexpectedly and uh, before actually completing the task that it was supposed to solve. And the third typical failure of a program is that the program hangs. That is, it becomes unresponsive and does not continue in its task, but doesn't terminate either. Let me show a few examples of this behavior. Um, the examples are all available uh, on GitHub. And in this example, what the programs should be doing is they should sum up uh, 100 random internet integer values that are contained in the, fi in the file data.txt. They should add, add them up and print the results on screen. So let's first have a look at the data.txt file. So there are uh, 100, uh, 100 different values. And the correct um, behavior would be in this program where we can see that the sum is roughly 1.5 million give or take give or take a few of course the first one is the program can terminate and produce the wrong output in this case simply zero which is obviously wrong the second one it could crash so in this case um, the program uh, terminates unexpectedly and this often looks somehow some way along these lines and of course it can also hang program continues to run and you see it doesn't terminate it's still running but it doesn't produce any output and it will stay this way at infinitum and I have to manually I have to manually terminate it in this case, by pressing Control Z, uh, Control Z. So, let's have a look. Let's have a look in the um, in the source codes. So, to give you a little bit of idea of why this happened. Let's start with the crash file. So, in this case, I open I open the file, and then in this loop. Here, I continuously read values in, but of course, eventually I will read the end of the la the end of the file, and the read command is then unable to read this to read this this number in, and not know and without any other information, it will just say it will just force a crash. In order to prevent this crash from happening we can add this um, iostat parameter into the read command. And this will mean that um, if read encounters any error, instead of crashing the whole program, it will simply set this uh, integer variable to a non-zero value and then just assume that the program itself deals with it. However, we are not dealing with it. We just keep repeating this loop over and over because we're still not exiting. So when the program hangs, it's actually, in, it's actually hanging inside this loop. And ultimately most hangs will, most if not all hangs will at some point be performing a loop over and over and over. Even a program that's, that seems to be waiting onto something 
underneath it will be a loop that says, has this happened yet? If, if yes, stop. Otherwise, repeat the loop. And by adding this another line for the for, by for actually checking for this per, uh, for this iOS statement, we are now getting the correct output. Um, we're now getting the correct output. We continue. We get the um, we exit the loop when we have read past the end and the wrong output in this case is a little bit different. In this case, I've made a, a calculation error here. I'm not adding the numbers, I'm multiplying them. And of course, because I start with zero, it will always stay zero. Um, some terminology that I really like that I got from um, Andreas Zeller's pro, uh, book, Why Programs Fail. He points out that the term bug is too generic. And he proposes to use a specific terminology and particularly the terms defect, infection and failure. And all these three things um, refer to a specific affect, aspect of what we would generally call a bug. A defect is the actual programming error. While the defect might lie in a library or in the operating system or even the hardware, the defect most more often than not is located in the code that you are currently debugging. And even if it isn't in the code that we control, um, since the code is all that we can control, um, just the absence of the workaround for this defect could be reclassified as the defect in case. Either way, the objective of debugging is to fix the defect. An infection is a program state that is corrupted. A program state is mainly, think of it as the complete memory layout uh, combined with um, the current position inside the code. So at, at each point in the in in the program's execution, we expect the memory to be in a to be layout in a certain way, or the memory to contain certain values in a certain way. And if it if that isn't if if this if the state isn't in that way, then we call it corrupted, or we call that an infection. Not every defect causes an infection, but every infection is caused either by a defect or by a prior infection, um, which we call that infections propagate, that the infection is propagated. And finally, the failure is the observable error in the program. As a defect may or may not cause an infection, an infection may or may not cause a failure. But every failure is caused by an infection and every infection is caused either by a prior infection or by a defect. Let's have a little example of this. Um, I have a little program called FizzBuzz. That it should play the game FizzBuzz, where it should print the numbers, in this case 1 to 20, except if a number is a multiple of 3, it should print Fizz instead of the number. If the number is a multiple of 5, it should print Buzz instead. And if a number is a multiple of both, print fizzbuzz instead. So, but if I play this program, we can see that here for the number 15, it prints just fizz, where it should have printed fizzbuzz. So this right here, this right here is the failure. Let's have a look at the code. It's fairly simple. Now, the infection is that for the number of, fif of 15, we, rent we went into this branch of the if tree instead of this. And the defect in this case would be that 
in here, while we checked whether it was a multiple of three, we did not confirm that it was not also a multiple of five. So the program came to this situation, checked that it was a multiple of three, and didn't even care about that it was also a multiple of five. That we, that, and that we did not correctly identified this in the code, that is the defect. Thank you very much for this, for your attention. And in the next episode, I will then look into some basic ways how to debug uh, a code and how to find the defect. See you then.